Are you a fan of fast-paced first-person shooter combat? Do you like a game that isn't afraid to give you a challenge and punish you for your mistakes? Do you like your protagonists to be maniacal, bloodthirsty, killing machines that feed off the life force of their fallen foes? Well, put on your Sunday clothes and get ready for date night, because today we're going to look at Viscera Fest, Chapter 1. Viscera Fest is an indie shooter developed by Acid Man Games and Fireplant Games, published by 1C Entertainment. You play as Caroline, an unhinged bounty hunter on a mission to seal the deal with her very attractive and very small boyfriend Athens. However, her bank account is a little low on funds, so she decides to do what she does best, hunt down a bounty to get the booty. She takes the bounty for a certain space wizard named Chromune doing something heinous and illegal, so she invades his ship with the intent to cause massive damage and maximum casualties. Caroline herself is a very lively and fun character. The voice actor, Jana Polson, did an outstanding job of bringing her to life and making her a joy to listen to throughout the game. I've got two guns. That should be enough for all of you. She'll crack one-liners in the heat of combat, as well as singing little tunes if you go idle for a certain amount of time. And I gotta say, Caroline has quite the singing voice. I love you, baby. And if it's quite all Gotta love the classics. She has so much personality behind her, it would be hard not to enjoy her. She's a gun-toting, merciless killing machine that derives a lot of joy from her profession, and she does it all with a maniacal and bloody grace. You wanna dance? It, baby. The game is a challenge, and I don't mean that lightly. When you first start out, I highly suggest you start out on the lower difficulties to learn the mechanics and the flow of the game. Don't put yourself on brutal or extreme right away, as this could easily lead to an unpleasant experience. In Viscera Fest, you move fast, kill fast, and you can die fast. Even the dinkiest enemies like the lowly trooper can take you out if you're not careful enough, and I'm ashamed to admit that they've caused a lot of my deaths in many of my playthroughs. Luckily, getting back into the fray is just as fast should you end up dying anyway. You'll notice that ammo is a precious resource for most of the game, so you have to pick your targets and use your arsenal wisely. This is especially so in the early game where your weapon pool is fairly limited and so is the ammo. In the later levels, however, some ammo types become more common while at the same time the game throws more enemies into the mix that are harder to kill. The movement is probably some of my favorite in a shooter outside of Ultra Kill, and that's because of how fluid it feels. Caroline has great air control and a bit of floatiness. In a single jump, you can change your direction a couple of times before hitting the ground. When you let go of your movement keys, Caroline will slow down quickly, and you can slow yourself down by moving in the opposite direction you're moving, giving you a lot of control over how you move in the air. Movement, Blech. movement mechanics such as bunny hopping and dashing add a lot of speed to the mix as well. B hopping is very simple. Just press space bar when you touch the ground and do this continuously. You can pick up speed pretty quickly this way and even round corners while doing it. The dash will give you a slight boost to your speed as well, and can be used in conjunction with b-hopping to really hit those top speeds. This dash has a slight cooldown to it, but if you time your jumps and dashing right, you can dash just after jumping fairly consistently. It also gives you a very brief moment of invincibility, making it an important tool for evading enemy attacks. All of these mechanics together are important for traversal and survival in this Fest, and in my opinion work very well if you play smart with it. You can circle in a big arena to avoid incoming projectiles, or even jump over enemies' heads when you're in a tight spot or you're cornered. Another important feature is the melee attack. Instead of having an alt fire on the weapons, the right mouse button is, by default, set to punch. A single tap will have Caroline hurl a punch. Tapping up to three times will do a three hit combo, ending in a powerful uppercut. If this button is held, Caroline will charge the punch and go straight to the uppercut. Behold the mighty fist. Not only is the melee important for managing your ammo, but it's also important for you to heal. There are no medkits in this game at all, outside of a power-up, there's only one way to revitalize yourself. When you jib an enemy, they will drop their heart. If you pick it up before it disappears, it'll give you a small amount of HP. The fist is really good for this, at least with lower tier enemies or weakened enemies. You can also jib corpses that litter each level for a quick heal if you need it, acting like a health pack in and of themselves. 
The janitors can be used as living medkits as well, should you choose to murder these poor, innocent laborers. I should note, you don't need to use the fist to jib enemies. You can easily do this with your guns as well. However, the trade-off is that you're sacrificing ammo to do so, instead of just punching them. This is where you really need to think on the fly in Viscera Fest. Do you take the risk and go in to punch the enemy to save some ammo and heal yourself? Or do you take them out safely from a distance at the risk of using more ammo and possibly even missing a heal? And like many other shooters, you must be able to prioritize what targets are the immediate threat and which ones are more manageable. Do you go for the grenade lobbing grenadiers, or do you take out the full auto enforcers? It's this combination of choices you have to make and the tools you have at your disposal that really make Viscera Fest a joy to play in my eyes. It's a balance of managing your relatively small resource pool wisely. Punch this enemy, shotgun this guy, duck behind cover, move around the arena to get a better vantage point, collect some armor, or even duck away and retreat if you need to. It wouldn't be a first person shooter without some guns, and I think Viscera Fest has a pretty decent roster so far. In the current early access, there are six weapons overall that you can collect. You start with the pistol, a slow-ish firing gun that can work as a decent last resort if necessary. Next, you have the Bigger Brothers, the Dual Shredders, which fire fast and use the same ammo as the pistol. The Shredders are good for stunlocking some tankier enemies and, well, shredding through them. Next, we have the Shotgun, a double-barreled beast known as the Bunker Buster. It fires a volley of pellets in a rectangular pattern. This can easily jib low-health enemies and even one-shot enforcers. The max ammo for this weapon sits at 12 shots, but if you're playing wisely, that is more than enough and I find that some of the later levels give you plenty of ammo for it. Then we have a pseudo rocket launcher called the Pung Cannon. This beauty fires shells that on contact with the surface will attach itself and detonate shortly afterwards. If fired directly at an enemy, it explodes on contact and deals massive amounts of damage. This can even insta-jib grenadiers, which is always nice in my book. The big boy gun, and probably my favorite so far, is the Deus Mortis, a huge gun that fires a gargantuan volley of pellets that move relatively slowly. This thing absolutely eats through enemies and can even penetrate a crowd. Ammo for this is fairly rare, but can be found hidden around later levels and in secrets as well. Finally, we have the Plague Rifle. This baby fires toxic pustules that detonate on contact, leaving behind a noxious cloud that deals damage over time and even stunlocks enemies. Fuck! It's very useful for crowd control if you need to lock down a heavy target to focus on thinning the herd. While it's not very punchy or explodey, I quite like it and the utility it can bring to the table. Something I wish I would have seen more is some more substantial feedback. Enemies will wince when you hit them and you can sunlock them, jibbing them is always a good time, but big hits tend to just drop the enemies to the ground instead of giving them some form of knockback. Explosions very similarly tend to kill or jib the enemies right where they stand and even the tankier enemies that can survive this don't seem to be phased and aren't knocked back by any noticeable degree. This isn't to say the weapons feel weak. They have a very punchy sound to them, especially the shotguns. I just like to see dead things go flying when their near explosions are getting knocked back from powerful hits. Speaking of enemies, Viscera Fest offers up a wide cast in the first chapter. The ones you'll see most often are the tiny troopers, the homie hugging thunderbirds, the raspy enforcers, and the tall and intimidating grenadiers. There are plenty more you'll encounter later on, but I'm going to leave that up to you guys to see. Each enemy has a different attack pattern and a visual or audio cue to let you know when they found you and when they're attacking. In some cases, you have a split second to recognize this and react, but for the most part, each enemy has a distinct tell and pattern that they will always follow, allowing you to react accordingly and to prioritize. Something Viscera Fest does differently from other shooters is that it gives the players a limited number of saves through an item called the Save Beacon. Upon restarting, you'll come back into the place at that beacon. This might seem like it's a bit unfair, but hear me out for a moment. The saves are typically given to you right before any difficult room or arena, giving you a chance to place it there in the event of your demise. I also found that in the later, longer levels, you're given a decent amount of beacons, especially if you secret hunt. The saves work to your resource management in a way, and when you have more than one, you should try to use them strategically. Vistra Fest is built around dying and retrying finding the most efficient path to take and methods to kill. It can be a bit trial and error, and there was only one interaction I can recall that felt unfair, but that is actually going to be changed for the early access release. Nothing really felt unfair overall though. There are the occasional tricks and traps that will trip you up, but if you act quick enough, you could survive. 
Once I figured out how to take out a room, coming back to it on a replay was much easier, much faster, and very fun. So be prepared to die. Adjust your strategy area. Strategy area when. Adjust your strategy area where. Strategy area. God. Adjust your strategy where necessary, and if push comes to shove, make sure you're on a difficulty that's right for you. No need to power through it if you're not having fun. Viscera Fest is a very colorful game. It has a lot of purples, pinks, reds, blues, and greens, and they're all very vibrant. These colors are used especially well to help differentiate the levels from one another, especially since each level is very similar in terms of the basic aesthetics, that being a sci-fi alien base. The levels themselves are all really fun to traverse and highly replayable. There's plenty of exploration to be done, lots of secrets to find, and a bit of backtracking and item collecting as well. These little collectibles, called Scullies, will be used in the hub as currency for modifiers for each level you've beaten. However, at the time of recording and writing, just before the early access release, modifiers are currently unavailable. Each level offers up its share of wide open areas for you to practice and flex your movement skills, to choke points that force you to move forward and take the threat head on. One level in particular absolutely blew me away, visually speaking. I won't share it here because I don't want to spoil that experience for you, but you'll know it when you get there. I hope to see more levels like this in the future chapters, something to really mix up the scenery and open different avenues for the level design. The weapons and enemies are quite colorful, and in the case of the enemies, I find they're distinct enough from the environment that they don't really blend in or get lost. Something you're likely to notice is the lack of rotation sprites, so enemies and their corpses will always be facing you. Not just enemies really, but any sprite in the game. I personally don't mind this, as I feel like the fact that the enemies will always face you keep their aggression high, and their attacks are more predictable. It does look odd when the enemies are moving around the arena, as it tends to look like they're shuffling their feet in a crab-like walk, but in the heat of battle, you're likely not to pay that too much mind. The HUD is very nice and not very intrusive. It's just big enough to show you the important information in the bottom corners of your screen. I would like to see some options to possibly resize the HUD or have a minimal HUD, or an option to disable the HUD altogether. It's not really necessary, but it would be fun for challenge runs. Oh yeah, you can see Caroline's body and legs. Yeah, it looks a little odd, but it's cute. Just look at those little dancing feet go. I am not a music guy. I don't listen to a lot of music in my free time, even when I work on scripts. And I don't really know the nuances of sound design or music composition. I'm also not very familiar with the various music genres, but I do know what I like, and I really like the soundtrack for Viscera Fest. The music is composed by Marky Music and has this very cool synthy sound to it. Each level has their own track and each one of them sounds unique. There's some arcadiness to it that I really enjoy and some heavy sounding guitars and deep pulsating beats. Music can go from a light and fun tone to a darker, more heavy tone. I would often find myself rocking out to the music in those rare idle moments and really getting into it. You can actually listen to the OST on Chapter 1 on YouTube right now, and I highly recommend checking it out. Overall, I've had a really good time with Viscera Fest. It's a challenging game that relies on your ability to adapt, prioritize, and survive, with some trial and error learning in a few places, but it's also very replayable. It's tough, but not unfair, unless you go into it on a higher skill level than you're prepared to. Trust me, don't start on extreme. A comfortable difficulty for myself right now is brutal, and I still find myself dying in some situations, though I am working on an extreme playthrough currently. Medium and hard are very comfortable to play on as well, so I suggest starting there while learning the ropes. It's hard for me to judge how long it took me to complete it, as I played the demo levels extensively, and they were quick for me to get through. But the additional levels in Chapter 1 took me a decent amount of time to complete if I factor in devs and secret hunting. So for my first playthrough, I believe it took me around 2.5-3 hours. So the experience is a bit short. Depending on the difficulty you choose and the amount of secret hunting you do, this could be anywhere between a 2-4 hour experience for a first run. If you're a speedrunner or intend on learning a speedrun, I think this game is going to be a quick favorite for you. 
The pace of the game and the movement makes it a real joy to run, and I plan on trying some more 100% speedruns once I figure out where all those secrets are. If you're concerned about how much the game is going to cost, for now it's going to be 15 burger bucks on Steam, GOG, and the Epic Games Store. And when the game goes full release, it'll go up to 20 burger bucks. Otherwise, I would recommend you guys check this one out. It's a shorter experience, but very fun and a good challenge. It has a killer soundtrack and an absolute blast of a protagonist that is sure to put a menacing grin on your face while you play. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this is a new format for me and I'd like to try it out more in the future. It wasn't the most organized experience I've had, but, you know, trying it out more in the future might be good for me. So, hey, you know, maybe more reviews to come in the future. Uh, I hope this was in-depth enough for you guys, and I really just think you should check it out. So, thanks again everyone. Take care.